Hello, Kings Fire Church family. It's a real privilege to be able to uh, connect with you this way. I've got Gianna behind the camera, and uh, we're just going to share a few uh, moments just looking at the truth of Scripture, uh, understanding uh, what's going on from the correct perspective in our life is always the most important uh, part of going through a situation. It's not just what we're going through, but how we're able to see what we're going through and maintaining the correct perspective of what it is that's happening around us. And so we're just going to take a few moments. I want to, uh, before we get started, just say uh, we're so excited. We have the Bowsers. Jeremiah and Courtney Bowser are going to be with us uh, for the weekend, not in person, but through a live stream, very similar to what we did for Pastor Andy last weekend. And I just, I'm so excited. I know for them being locked down over in France, it's got to be a challenge uh, for them being away from friends and family. Uh, and so they're going to be able to connect with us in that way. And so I'm just hoping that you'll take time, uh, 1030 this coming Sunday morning to uh, just mark that time as a time to sign in and uh, tune into Facebook uh, live as we stream that and just uh, be blessed and be a blessing to the Bowsers. And I hope you were blessed by uh, Pastor Andy uh, coming in and being with us this past weekend. And we just so appreciate their worship team and uh, just the way that they were able to bless us. I felt so encouraged and I'm hearing from many people that were able to watch that they also felt uplifted, encouraged, uh, just uh, strengthened in our faith. This is, uh, it's a time for faith. It's a time for people who profess faith to really rise up in their faith and to let it be expressed. And so we're excited. We're going to see where this all goes. But one thing we know for sure, there's an airplane flying overhead. You can probably hear that. Uh, one thing we know for sure is we know that it all works together for good. And I was easy to say that and let that be one of our favorite scriptures but times like this are really the, the chance for us to demonstrate that we know and that we are confident that all things are working together for good because ultimately that is what the world uh, that lacks confidence is looking for in a friend in a co-worker in someone uh, that's living on the same planet they are they need to see confidence they need to see an assurance and a strength in people uh, who know how this thing ends and uh, I was reading a few scriptures, and this particular one in First Timothy chapter six is the one that I want to look at uh, for this these next few minutes. It's found in First Timothy chapter six and verse seventeen, and I'm going to read it in the New King James Version of the Bible. I read it in about seven different translations, not because I'm super holy or anything, just because it's real easy on my Bible app on my phone. I can hit compare. I don't know if you've ever tried that, but you highlight a scripture on U version, and then you press the compare button, and whichever uh, translations you select, it'll show the text in those translations and gives a better understanding of what's being talked about. But it says in verse 17 of 1 Timothy chapter 6, Paul says, Command those who are rich in this present age not to be haughty, nor to trust in uncertain riches but in the living God who gives us richly all things to enjoy let them do good that they be rich in good works ready to give willing to share storing up for themselves a good foundation for the time to come that they may lay hold on eternal life and as I did a word study through this little passage here, and it's very self-explanatory, uh, Paul's enc encouraging his spiritual son Timothy to speak uh, with a commanding voice to the people who have wealth in this present age, and he's, he's telling them to challenge them about trusting in that wealth, that it's okay to have it, but don't trust in it. And the word there that's used is the word uncertain. It says nor to trust in uncertain riches. And as I did the word study on uncertain, it uh, comes from a Greek word. I won't try to say it. It's Strong's number 83 if you want to go there and figure out the pronunciation. You're welcome to do that. But that word uncertain only appears one time in the New Testament. It only appears that time right there as Paul is saying this to Timothy. And sometimes we see words and we say, well, they appear 20 times, so they must be important. But I think if a word only appears once, maybe it's also very important to understand what it means. And so I thought, let me look it up. And as I looked it up, 
I discovered that what the word actually means, the, the closest translation to it, is actually the word unrecognized. Unrecognized. And so I want to read this passage again, but I want us to compare two realities. There's the present age that appears in verse 17, combating those who are rich in this present age, not to be hard and haughty or to trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God who gives us richly all things to enjoy. Let them do good that they be rich in good works, ready to give, willing to share, storing up for themselves a good foundation for the time to come. For the time to come. Two distinct seasons are talked about in these three verses. The first one says those who are rich in this present age. The next one is those who are going to behave in a certain way in order that they would store up for themselves a good foundation for the time to come. And if you talk to people, one of the greatest things they're struggling with is the uncertainty of what's happening right now with COVID-19. They're just uncertain. The, you can have small talk, but then people immediately begin to speak about well, when do you think it's going to end? And what do you think is going to happen with this and with that? And they begin to look into the future with a whole bunch of questions because there's something in us as humans that wants to be certain. We want to know for sure what comes next. We just can plan better that way. We can prepare for things. And indeed, there's a time for preparing and being ready. We're told to do those things too. But riches are not the way. The, the present riches of this age are not the way to be secure. The way to be secure is in verse 18. Let them do good that they be rich in good works, ready to give, willing to share, storing up for themselves a good foundation for the time to come. This word uncertain, meaning unrecognized, has incredible significance to what's being talked about here. The age to come, the foundation for the time that's coming, that they may lay hold on eternal life. That last part of this passage is understood through that word, unrecognized. What he's telling him, what he's telling Timothy to say to the rich people who are rich now, is that what you think your confidence is in, what's making you feel secure and, and, uh, and maybe even haughty or proud now, don't put your trust in it because you're putting your trust in something that is unrecognized in the age to come. It's unrecognized in the place where we're all going to go. The foundation that we lay up there with the materials of what we have now, the materials of now will be unrecognized there. That's why he uses the word uncertain. It's not just that it's uncertain in the sense of we don't know how the stock market's going to go or we don't know uh, what's going to be having value tomorrow compared to today. Those things are question marks that lead to uncertainty, yes. But the text here, the context of this is that the things you trust in now, you will not be able to trust in in the age to come, in the time to come. And whether that's just when we die and we go and we be with Jesus in heaven, or whether it's for the time that's ahead of the church right now, I think it has dual meaning. Because this foundation is laid, listen to how it's laid, by doing good, by being rich in good works, being ready to give, willing to share, storing up for themselves a good foundation. Everything that we've witnessed, so much, I should say, of what we've witnessed, whether it be the paper goods sections being wiped out of supermarkets and everything else, it's just an indication that people still don't know that where they're going, the time that's to come, those things will no longer provide security. They're unrecognized in the, in the, in the territory that's in front of us. The season we're about to walk into, the things we've trusted in, the certain riches that we had now, that we felt were certain, they're unrecognized in the place where we're going towards. It's so important we get this now because there's nothing like being caught off guard. There's nothing like being unprepared and many people experienced that when they went to buy a simple item this past week and they discovered it had been scarfed up by people who didn't fit the description of what's written here. They weren't doing good. They weren't ready to give. They weren't willing to share. They were willing to hoard. They were ready to store up for themselves the things that they're trusting in now. And if we don't break this mindset as believers and recognize that God's the one who gives richly. I love the contrast in the first verse. It says, we should not trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God, who gives us richly all things to enjoy. You notice that same word is used, that the riches 
the uncertain riches are compared with the way that God gives us things. Not what he gives us, but how he gives us. Richly is an adverb. It's a descriptive word to describe how it is, the manner of which God gives us all things to enjoy. It's so important to realize this just a couple days ago, um, the Lord gave us the gift of a grandson. And uh, Malik John Ortman is a, he's just amazing. I can't uh, see enough of him. He's just so cute and uh, just, just want to grab him and hold him and don't let go. And uh, it's just an amazing thing that when God gives things, he gives them richly. Not the things that the world might say have value, but when you know God's given you something, there's a way that God gives that makes it so much more meaningful. God gives richly. And when we put our trust in the Lord, the living God, we're going to discover that the way he gives us the peace that we need, the joy that we need, the, ex the, the expression to be able to be generous to others, all these things have to come from the Lord because they're not found in human nature. It's time for the church to realize we're called to be able to do good, to be rich in good works, to be ready to give, willing to share, and thereby store up for ourselves a good foundation for the time to come so that we may lay hold on eternal life. Another translation says, true life. You can be alive and breathing, but be dead on the inside, full of fear and anxiety. God wants to break us free from that by revealing what's the wealth of heaven.